So welcome to our uh, afternoon talk, Building Debian Images. So please uh, leave, give a warm applause to Riku Voipio. Thanks. So my name is Riku Voipio, and I work at Linaro in a team called Build Some Baselines, which in this case means that a lot of stuff I do is I make distribution images. Uh, if you are not familiar what a disk image is, it's a, it looks like a hard drive. It has everything that a hard drive would have inside its contents. There would be the boot sector, the partitions, the file systems, and their contents. Bootable disk images can boot them after you put them back on a hard drive. So there's some uh, overlap because sometimes people, when they hear a disk image, they think about a picture of a hard drive. And <laughs> it might confuse people. But if you are, have been using disk images already, this is nothing new for you. And at Linaro, we have uh, created our own tool, like it seems almost everyone has. Uh, it's called Linaro Media Create, or Linaro Image Tools is the package which it comes from in Debian. Uh, the idea is that we have a generic distribution root file system such like Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, and then we have a hardware specific hardware pack for, we support many different kinds of ARM developer boards and each of them would have their own hardware pack which includes the kernel, bootloader, and possibly some user space components specific for this very board. And using this tool, we merge these things together. The idea was not to distribute the images because that would be a matrix of downloads. If we have three boards and three distributions, it would be nine. If we add more boards, it only gets bigger and bigger. But alas, it turns out most of our users were just asking, I don't want to run this command. I would like to have a pre-made image. Can you provide them? I would just have, like to have something I can use the Unix DD command to put on the SD card and boot on it. So it turned out that we now have a lot of images on our Linaro servers available for downloads. Fast forward a few years later and Linaro Media Create is not as good for us as it used to be. So people who designed it are no longer working for us and the use case is a bit outdated. At Linaro, we would really like to have one kernel that works on all boards, not some specific hardware pack per each device. And on the other hand, we haven't really reached this goal because we get new hardware which is always needing a specific kernel before the main lining progress has happened. So there's new platforms like the 96boards.org platforms which are not su supported by Linaro Media Create. We would need to do some changes to the source code to make it happen. But Nobody has really had the big motivation to do that, and instead we have kind of hacked our way around it. So we started looking into alternatives, because it surely must be a problem that a lot of people have bumped into. So some of the findings, there are actually really a lot of people who do install Debian from images instead of using the Debian installer. For example, cloud servers. You don't run Debian installer on Amazon Web Services. You have a pre-built image. Same for other places like Microsoft Azure or the Scaleway system, which is an ARM-based hosting provider. Embedded boards, this is uh, close to what we do. Pretty much every single embedded board you find that says they have a Debian image for you. Raspberry Pi has their Raspbian-based fork. It has a disk image. 
Viego Bone provides Debian disk images, Qbox, everyone has their own. And finally, there's the class of OEM pre-installed images and workplace where the some centralized admin provisions disk images using clonezilla or something similar. They are not necessarily built using a tool, but manually install one machine and then save the disk contents and continue. And of, there's still one case there live CD users, they actually never install anything, but they always use that pre-built image. So how many of you here have used one of these cases too? Everyone? Few, few people didn't, but almost every hand went up. So why do people do this? One is speed. If you're having a factory that is producing hundreds of boards Every single minute you do setting on the factory floor with the board is expensive. So you really want to just put something on the device as so soon as possible. Other one is convenience. I mean, you just get a file, put it on a SD card, boot it, that's it. Instead of please configure this USB stick and put it on and wait for 15 minutes and then you will have a Debian system after you've answered to quite a few questions. And then for all the platforms that are not supported in Debian, adding the support for Debian installer for these platforms is often a big work and it might seem like a nice shortcut to just make an image and provide it to users. So what do tools that make these images do? First, there, there's a loopback file created, a file that is big enough to fit the real hard drive contents. Partitions are put on it. The partitions are formatted with some file system like X4 or FAT file system in case the bootloader needs it. A debootstrap is run to fill a basic Debian system there. At least everyone can of the tools I've built uses the bootstrap and no one has reinvented that one. Uh, usually, there are some extra packages that everyone wants to install when they're making an image. So there's at least a parameter or option provided for this. A default user is added or a password is added, SSH keys, things that let the user to use it for the first time. Then we have some customization scripts. Some are hard-coded into the tool. They're somewhere hidden there that they do some little bit mingling of that. Or they are just defaults that you can override. And then there's some customizations user can do themselves, usually in form of some kind of shell script or shell commands. There's a kernel installed so that it can actually boot and the bootloader, if it's x86, it's usually Grub. On ARM platforms, there's a big variety of these. And one big motivation for image tools is that, in many cases, the bootloader is proprietary. And shipping it together with Debian is a challenge. Even might not be even legal if the bootloader is not actually redistributable. Now, there's some, if you have wondered what these tools use under, there's usually the same set of tools for everyone. There's the loop setup tool. You make a file look like a hard drive using LO setup. There's parted. It's a partition editing tool. It's also has an op alternative called FDisk, which was previously used a lot, but these days almost everyone uses GNU parted. Dbootstrap, as mentioned earlier, creates the basic Debian install with the minimum of packages you would expect to have, like dpkg and apt. Kpartex is 
probably a tool that not many people have heard about. It makes it possible to easily mount all partitions of a loopback uh, loop partition, loopback image, else you would have to set the offsets yourself and calculate how to mount them. QEMU is used for the tools that are from uh, creating cross-platform images. If you are running on x86 and you want an ARM image, you would use the QEMU's cross-arc emulation. And then there's the convenient QEMU-IMG command, which is used to convert uh, loopback files to different uh, formats expected by virtualization tools. Then there's cloud init, which is could be described as a pre-seed file for first boot. You're booting a system and you want to put your own SSH key there or set up passwords from a generic image. Cloud init is, seems to have taken a de facto standard on it. You can, for example, set a DHCP server to provide a file that has all the possible configurations you want to do on the first boot or you can do stuff on the kernel command line. Because there's no official image building tool in Debian, there's essentially a dozen tools in Debian for, to make these. I make a brief tour of what I found. The usually people say that everyone should be using Debian installer. Why are you putting this image and, well, you can create images with Debian installer. It is possible. The Debian installer has a cool feature called preceding. You create a configuration file that has all the possible answers that you would ever want for setting the partitions, what packages you want there, username, password. It's all there, done, Debian installer. But there are problems. It needs to boot the Debian installer to run it. You can't run it on a CH root. And if you have a desktop machine, you probably don't want to run Debian installer on it to overwrite the stuff you have on it. So you have to use a virtualization tool, or like KVM, Xen, something else, QM VirtualBox. So the pre-seed file allows you to customize it, and as long as the options you want to configure are in the pre-seed file or some debconf option, it's pretty handy. And the virt manager project provides a package called virt-inst, which will do these automated installations really simple. You can do things like inject the pre-seed file in the init rd file automatically, which is not, by command, hand on command line, it's not very easy. There's quite a bit of steps you would need to make. So, is this dark background visible? This would be an example of how you would use Debian installer to make an image with uh, the vert inst tool. To install the packages vert inst and the recommendation libvert bin. In case you have no install recommends, it's just there. You start the virtualization networking that the tool needs. It's based on libvert, so if you haven't been using libvert, it might seem a slightly alien. There's the system, the options. We are calling it Debian 8, but using variant of Wheezy, Debian Wheezy, it works just fine. The tool has just outdated names. File name is set. We have a pre-seed file we put on the configuration. And finally, we give it the Debian installer, init RD, and kernel locations where to download them from. Some run this command and some 14 minutes later you have a nice x86 image for virtualization tools. So, 
Apart from people not knowing about this option, there are actually some real problems why Debian installer is not very useful for making pre-built images. As if you have a really weird platform, you would need to add support to Debian installer, which again is a bit daunting task for some people. And if you need to change something that the preceding doesn't allow, there's no option for that. You need to build a custom DI image, which again is a big job to learn about, probably a bigger job to, than to write your own image writing tool. It doesn't anonymize images because it expects the image to be the one that it will be actually used. So things like the SSH host key would be shared by every single board that uses the same image. There's others like machine ID and things like this, which could make things look very confusing when you look at the network. And as mentioned, it can be a bit slow. So there exists another tool that is officially used in Debian. It's called Live Build. It builds the Debian official live CDs. It skips the Debian installer booting part by using a ch root where everything happens. It can do cross architecture installations with QEMO, and it ha can be customized really easily with hook scripts put in different locations. The more hook scripts you put, the less like Debian it looks like, but it's, and it's not necessarily clear which hook you need to run at what point, so it can easily create a rather confusing setup. It really targets read-only images, so it builds a squash FS setup and so on. So if you are using live build to make a read-write image, you might get some surprises. And since it's actually designed to be a live CD tool, it takes care about anonymizing the image by the uh, hooks that come with it by default. It's a quick live build example. We will be giving it a parameter of boot device hard drive instead of CD-ROM, so it doesn't create the ISO image, but something that could be booted. We're giving it a custom kernel package. For this to actually work, you would have to ha also add a repository, which has the uh, custom kernel. And finally, there's the sources list where to pull everything from. The, after we run the LB com config command, there's now a tree of files under config directory where you can append things like packages you want to install and all that configuration of hooks and so on. And finally, you would use the super user rights to actually build the image. Here's a slightly alien called tool bootstrap dash bz is clearly not something that you would find with when you're looking for a disk building image. It is a, as a package in Debian, but the one that people actually use is ahead of that and it's available on GitHub. The, I checked just there's a bug report where people are saying that they are actually working on updating the Debian one as well. This tool seems to be the one that is used to build the official images for Amazon and Google Cloud and some others. So one thing that sets it apart from the previous tools that it's written in Python, it has some plugins and it even has tests. So it's been put a little bit more thought than many of the other tools I found. In this example command line I, I've added here, I'm just installing Bootstrap Beats it from Debian to pull all the dependencies that this tool has. And then we take the git clone of the actual version that is being used. And then you would simply run the command with the a definition of the 
virtual machine image you want to create. Here's one example definition. It's for the Google Cloud Engine. GCE means that in this case, you have basic simple parameters as in YAML format, what is the release you want to use, architecture, disk image type, partitions, sizes, and finally there's the list of the plugins. There's the Google plugin that does the Google customization and an NTP plugin to set up the NTP stuff. So it's a bit more clean than many of the other op tools where everything is set up on command line. Then we have VMD Bootstrap, which seems to be now under quite active development. It calls itself a D-Bootstrap wrapper for disk image building. And it has explicit cross-architecture support. It's been one of the use cases to build ARM images with uh, using QMO as well here. There's no configuration file, just a command line where everything is done. And when you run out of the options that the VMD Bootstrap supports, you can run a customization script to do the rest or make a wrapper script around it. Uh, here's the VMD Bootstrap example provided in the examples where VMD Bootstrap is around to create an image for Beagle Blown Black. We set up foreign architecture ARMHF and we tell that we need this QMO binary to run on it. So network configuration options, it's the option of setting the root password extra packages listed, and some customization commands with the final Beagle Blown Black customized script, including the actual setup of the bootloader and kernel, which are skipped from earlier using the no kernel and no X Linux options. More tools, OpenStack tool, team has two tools in Debian, OpenStack-Debian-Images, which builds pure Debian images using tools in Debian. And then from upstream, there's a disk image builder, which can build images not only for Debian, but for Ubuntu, Red Hat, and so on. And quite a bit bigger and diff somewhat alien tool for Debian. More. XenTools has a uh, image creation tool which is not necessarily designed to distribute images but to build them on demand. It's quite still possible to use those images outside Xen although they have been quite tailored. Rootstrap is a tool that is still in Debian. It was designed to use for UML and I believe used by Ubuntu earlier more extensively. These days it's probably a bit forgotten and out of date. Linaro Media Create is the tool I mentioned earlier. We have uploaded it into Debian. Takes the kernel and bootloader included in a hardware pack and a root file system created earlier and creates a booted, bootable image out of them. GRML Debootstrap. GRML has a tool for this one as well. It's basically similar to Live CD or Live Build, but tailored for GRM, GRML. So so far, I've counted ten tools. Did I miss any? <coughs> okay. Hi. Ah, now it works. Okay, uh, just two slight cor uh, um, corrections. Grimmel Debootstrap is actually very nice to just debootstrap Debian. 
but from within Grimmel or Debian. So um, it's not only tailored uh, for Grimmel Live CD. And Xen Tools actually doesn't do disk images, but partition images. So slightly different, but yeah. But you can still make a disk image out of that partition. Mm, at least I haven't tested that for ages. Okay. There's a question. Any question? Uh, well, as for tools, I've also noticed uh, Multistrap. I haven't used it yet. I have because I'm currently in the process of developing how to best do it for my use cases. But I've I've noticed that also. <coughs> okay, so I think that Multistrap is actually like debootstrap, but designed to be used yeah. with several different sources lists and not really a disk image building tool. Um, it's a little unconventional, but uh, LTSP builds an image that uh, typically ships over NBD, but we've experimented with using it on disk. Okay. So 11. <laughs> I see someone from Phi raising their hand. Currently, we do not have a disk image build tool, but there are plans to do <laughs> such a thing. <laughs> so I think most of the things we have already, only the car particles, and uh, yeah, this, this thing is missing. But all other things, uh, creating a DD image, we can do this. So maybe we call it cloud image, create cloud image. That's better <laughs> than disk image. <laughs> So an, another option that I've actually used is to, to if for, for architectures that you can build a VM for, is build the VM and install the things that you want in it and then convert the VM image into a, into a disk image. Right, so you can basically use anything like QMOR, VMware, or, and it's of course then a manual work to run through with the installer. And this was only inside Debian. <laughs> if by numbers you count the best thing, it's of course spindle that is used to build the Raspberry Pi images. Supposedly, I haven't really checked the chain because following down the track from the image that goes into the Raspberry Pi to the actual scripts that are used is not trivial. It's hidden in repository after repository. OMAP image builder, uh, one that I've used previously. It builds images for Beagle, Blom, Black, and other OMAP based systems. It's quite nice, actually. Yeah. ArmBN builds images for QBox and HumingBoard, some others as well. Chameleon is an, it calls itself an appliance creator. That's another Google word to look for, image building tools. And the grid 5,000 people seem to be using this one. VM Builder is what was previously used to build Ubuntu VM images for cloud services. It seems that it has been depreciated it's with their own hand-built scripts. Now, of course, these slides, the links are not clickable because you're watching the slides. I'll give the URL to the slides as soon as the talk is over. And more, 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 but I can't just list them all here. I think I just remembered one more in Debian. There's this Superman appliance builder thingy previously called Feeboot Swap. Supermin. Yeah. I think that also builds, well, kind of um, images, but stripped down to whatever. <laughs> Could be possible. So a quick look under who, what they are programmed with. 
Debian installer is written in C and shell, so, and live build is shell as well. Bootstrap V8 set and VMD Bootstrap use mostly Python. Accent tools is written in Python. Uh, Perl, Perl. Yes, sorry for that. And Rootstrap was written in Shell, as well as many of the other ones. There's really seems to be two favorites, Shell and Python. And in many cases, the Python code is just calling a lot of Shell commands. <laughs> so the subjective conclusion. <laughs> Yes, exactly. There's the saying that in IT industry, the biggest things that people argue about are the smallest details, like the color of the bike shed when you're designing a nuclear power plant. <laughs> so in many cases, it seems that the person who is, has done the tool is also the main user of the tool. They have written it for their own taste, and they like it and at least they know it completely, how it works, and they are happy with it, and they've uploaded it to Debian in the hopes that other people will find it useful as well. And since people have written these tools, making them to switch to another is quite a challenge. Any tool that wants to replace these needs to be really nice to use and really able to convince them that they're going to be saving time by using someone else's code. How many people do we actually have here who have written one of these tools mentioned here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. So, we've looked into what the tools have been doing well and there's quite a bit of problems when people only think about their own use case. One of the really common things is that they allow you to build an image with a default password. And it's very convenient when you're doing it for yourself, but easily it will become an issue when it's been distributed for a wide audience and suddenly there's millions of hackable devices which have listening to the world with the SSH and have the same password. This is usually a problem for the tools that are designing embedded targets. The ones that are doing cloud images get this right, probably after a few mistakes. Another thing that makes these tools challenge to use is that they have hard-coded customizations that are designed for their specific use case. So, in case you want to use it for something else, it might have removed some important file that you would like to use. They might expect that e, uh, ETH0 is the network interface being configured, and if you have more network cards, it's not easy to customize that. Quite a many tools have a rather simplistic view of how to partition things, like just have one partition for bootloader and rest for the root file system or just one for root file system, make a squash FS and have X Linux load that directly. And if your use case doesn't fit this, then you're in trouble. Missing ability to change things on first boot, like the passwords or host names and so on. Unupgradable kernel bootloader, so the image sets the bootloader kernel in a very specific way, and you can't, no, once the system is running, you can't do an APT get upgrade to get a new kernel on it. The hooks that set the kernel for booting were in the scripts that were used to build the image, and the only way to update it would be by manual commands or by using the image building tool to make a new image. Another thing that happens often is that the CH root used to build the image doesn't actually take everything from the repository it's downloading but copies stuff over from the root file system that uh, the host file system 
So you have to have some specific versions of packages installed on your host system. And if they are not available or are different versions, the images produced are different or don't work. And of course, thing that make it hard to jump to another tool is that there might be something really nice in your tool and you haven't told anything, anyone else about it. One thing that would be usually nice to have because these disk images are of specific size is, would be to resize the image to fit the actual media on it on the first boot. So if you make a distributable image, you want to have it rather small so the downloads are small. You make a four gigabyte image for, a, it would be quite a download even compressed. So people make it two gigabyte image and then you put it on a 60 gigabyte SD card you boot it and you still have only two gigabytes available. So some tools support features like these and others don't. And the usual case, nobody bothers documenting because it's their own tool and they know how it works. Is there a way to fix this? Here's one option. Just joking. <laughs> So now I've run through my slides and I have a little bit time for discussion, I believe. So here's a couple of suggestions I've done. There was, a, I think someone wanted to talk. Yes. Hi, uh, just a comment about uh, the live build, uh, live build tool. Uh, before the Jesse freeze, it, it was in the process of being rewritten in Python. I don't know what the status is, but um, yeah, so maybe, it, well, it, it was quite hard to, to see what was happening during the, the process, and now hopefully it will become easier to, to hack. Okay. So having listed, what, 10, 11 tools, I thought you were about to introduce your 12th one, which would be better <laughs> than all the others. I didn't me. have time to write it yet. <laughs> Exactly. What I'm missing in most of the tools that they only have uh, one post in script. So the, the main part is done by the tool and then if you want to customize such an image, you can write your own shell script. And I think that's not a lot of help if you have different, um, different types of images. And uh, I think that would be helpful to have um, a more general structure to like plugins. I think Grimmel um, is, is, Grimmel for example is using Phi and they could create automatically every night like eight or 12 different uh, live images because they, they use the Phi classes. So there's a structure and not only this, you can use one post in script for customizing. I think that would be very helpful if a tool could provide more than, yeah, please write your own post in script. Indeed. So one, as, okay, let's have you please ask first. Well, um, I'd just like to respond to uh, that idea because um, I'm the current maintainer of Xen tools. Um, I took it over like, three or four years uh, ago from Steve Kemp. So I'm not the original author. Um, I feel a little bit singled out being the only tool written in Perl. So I thought about um, talking to Neil with, because of VM Bootstrap, but uh, when I noticed it's written in a different language, there's not much to share. But one thing we could share would be all those hook scripts which modify the image. So, because that's the part which is written in shell script for Xen tools too, and we also have some um, kind of roles we can um, deploy to the generated virtual machines. Right, so this is one of the suggestions I had here that these kind of customization hooks could often be packages, and if they're packages, you can install them with all of the tools. 
and you can do the regular updates to those if you find that out that one of the customization was actually bad. You can provide an updated version and distribute it to all the people who have installed the image earlier instead of the current way where if a hook needs to be updated, then people need a new image. Yeah. And one, one nice thing, uh, talking as the person who looked for all these things, it would be to have backlinks from wherever the image is downloaded that what was the actual tool that made this image. It, that would be critical for many people who want to change some small bit from the image and it, there's not easy easy way for that currently. Um, I think these tools are all nice and probably fit some use case, but what I think, if we want something for officially, or images labeled as official Debian, um, there should be quite a focus on having these images be as much as it makes sense, the same as was a Debian installer would produce at the same time. And so I think we should really first explore if there's not a possibility to um, have a Debian installer component that does all this denormalization that is needed to have a generic image. Maybe I think it's even possible to um, have Debian installer variants that could be run in a change route, but that's probably a bit challenging. I'm not, someone ha would have to try it, but, but do you have any ideas about how to do that? That's a good question. The more you customize, the less like, less like Debian it is. So when you're making official images, you want to do as few changes as possible. But on the other hand, the people make images for many custom cu purposes. And in that case, we shouldn't restrict what is possible. So we should certainly, certainly not restrict, but what I see is that many of these images have kind of things in them that are very opinionated by their maintainer. Indeed. Like the official OpenStack image uses not the default bootloader, it adds few but some additional packages which the maintainer thinks make sense, which are not in a default Debian install and so, things like that. So one of the things I picked up from this is that that second point about providing a link to the tool in the command line and config, um, VM to bootstrap does actually put its own config as a config file. I'll need a document that you can have a config file with, with this because obviously it, it, is now, it is something I've missed in the documentation. Um, but it's trivial. With a lo lot of these tools are very small. So you can easily, as an option, and I'm going to put this into a, a, a new version of VM to bootstrap, that it not only provides the config used to build the image, but it might as well provide VM to bootstrap itself and just stick it in somewhere. Um, and maybe install it on the image as an option, maybe just put the, the, the package somewhere with its dependencies, make it an option and I'll actually then give you, basically the script that ran the build is put inside the build. It's easy enough to do. Right. Okay, so I just would like to reply to one thing because I'm a maintainer of the bootstrap VZ. Which, uh, which one? Bootstrap VZ. It's oh. slightly outdated. It's my fault, sorry. Um, but uh, Amazon Amis and Google Cloud Images are built with this tool. And if you are checking um, Amazon Marketplace, because there's basically no other place to check from where the Ami is coming from, there is a reference link to our wiki, which is explicitly saying how the, how the image has been built and with what. So okay. if you didn't see it, I suppose it's probably because you were building images, well, you were checking Amazon images with, which are from Marketplace and not checking the actually Debian account on Marketplace. And unfortunately, there is not much we can do with it. We can just provide all the information we've got in this one specific place. So Okay, so Amazon might be the one of those places where I actually saw a backlink, so I didn't. It's just, I didn't mean that all tools miss them. I just meant that usually when you go see an image somewhere, it doesn't explain how it was created. So uh, one thing, we've talked about this before. Uh, one of the things that's come up is it will be really useful if uh, install scripts properly separated install time things from uh, image creation time things, uh, all the first boot sort of aspects. and. We'd need, we should put that in policy, and then a lot of stuff would just work, I, I think. 
uh, we, sh we should probably, you know, this comes up every few years and we go, we should do this and nobody's done this. Uh, I think that's probably a good idea. I assume you agree. Yes. So one thing that might exist somewhere in Debian, but I didn't find that was some standard way of making a first boot prompt where first time you boot the image, it says, hello, welcome to Debian. What username would you like to create? Please give it a password. And I'd say there's one other thing while I've got the mic. Uh, you talked about uh, kernel images not being upgradable because they're just rammed into a partition. And of course, the reason for that is because there isn't support for this particular device in um, Flash, kernel. Flash kernel. Yes. Uh, and you know that's just people do that because there isn't support in Flash kernel. So we can stop people doing that, but we'd have to have support for everything in Flash kernel. Um, which is generally a good thing, but I'm not sure we'll ever be ahead of that curve. That's always difficult. Um. Okay, last two, please. Um, as someone who's w done a lot of work around producing the, the official live images and the official OpenStack images, and I've got a queue of other people winding up asking me for other official images to be distributed, um, one of the things that is a real pain is the fact that a lot of these tools, of course, need root to run. Um, typically, just so they can run mucknod to make device nodes that go into, you know, into slash dev. Um, there are some tools around that remove that, uh, that need um, if you're prepared to use them. A lot of people don't think about it until they've already written these things a lot later. Um, yeah, Polystrap according to Wookie, I've, I've heard of a few others, I can't remember any of the names off the top of my head. Um, and moving on, the second thing, it's we have plenty of scope if people want to provide um, officially sanctioned Debian images from CD Image, which is a really, really bad name for the images. Um, Please talk to me. Please talk to the Debian CD team. We have plenty of scope to be able to build all kinds of things if it's useful. Right. Thanks. It seems the uh, mic people here are rather nervous, so I think we run out of time. So th yeah. Thank. Thank you very much for a very interesting talk. <laughs>